Hello my friends, today we will be going over 2015 Amy 2, problem number 13, here's a view of this problem. Uh, we're given a sequence of numbers A1 through AN, um, defined in the following manner, um, in terms of uh, summation of some trigonometric functions, basically a summation of sine functions, where here we should be careful the argument K is given in radian measure. So find the index of the 100th term for which a sub n is less than 0. Okay, so let me remind you of a few things. So pi radian, let me write that down here. So pi radian is equal to 180 degrees. And if I simply divide both sides by 3.14, roughly, huh? 3.14 that would imp oops 3.14 I should say um, that would imply that one radian would be approximately obviously equal to 57 degrees basically and now if I focus on my um, unit circle so let me go ahead and uh, draw just a circle huh? like that and remember on our circle, the, the horizontal axis will represent the cosine and the vertical component of the points on the unit, on the unit, or on, yes, on this unit circle basically represent the sine of the respective angle. So um, now going back to our problem, so we will start listing our terms so that we can have a sense of what's going on. So a sub 1 is simply equal to sine 1 radian uh, or you can say sine 57 degrees so 57 would be uh, so somewhere about here uh, so th that's basically sine 1 and obviously sine 1 and this vertical distance the vertical component of this point here uh, so that would be um that would definitely be positive right and i continue in this fashion so a sub 2 would be simply sine 1 plus sine um, 2 radian obviously sine 1 was positive sine 2 would be um, so this one is 57 degrees so 2 radian would be about 2 times 57 degrees which is 114 degrees so about here right this point and obviously if I take uh, the y component that would be the sine 2 and again this is positive so Sine 1 is positive, sine 2 is positive, you add two positive numbers, you get another positive number. And so far we have not found any um, term in our sequence where we get um, a negative number. And I will continue in this fashion. So a sub 3 would simply be equal to, uh, well, sine 1 plus sine 2 plus sine uh, 3 radian. Again, sine 1 and 2 were positive, sine 3, so 3 times um, 57 degrees would be uh, 171 degrees, still slightly less than 180 degrees, so it's a point somewhere here. And as a result, again, the sine of that is also, so sine 3 is again positive, so all three parts are positive, their sum is positive again. Now, um, let's go for a sub 4, which is... Uh, you can just list it as like a sub 3 plus sine um, 4, I guess. Um, well, a sub 3 was definitely greater than 0. And sine 4, well, sine 4 will be 4 times 57. Or, um, yeah, 4 times 57 degrees would be, I get 114 times 2, 228. So 228 is somewhere here, I guess, right? So, and, oh, wow. So this one is definitely negative. So you have a negative number. But now when you look at it, so you have three positive numbers here. Um, so this number in A3 plus this whole, and then this one. And on the other side, you just have one single negative number here. So this is definitely greater than zero. And so on. So A sub 5 will have A sub 4, which is we know is greater than zero, plus um, sine uh, 5. So 5 times uh, 57 degrees would be um, 285, so 270, so 285 will be, uh, so somewhere, let's go back to the black color, so somewhere here, and that's again negative, so now we have 3 positive, and then 2 negative, so right now this one I'm not very sure actually, actually this one I, I, I'm suspecting it might be negative or, 
or what, right? So I, 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 I'm not sure. And when I do um, find a sub 6, now what's interesting here is sine 1 plus sine 2 plus sine 3. Um, and we already know these three are definitely greater than zero. Plus sine four plus sine five plus sine six. I haven't shown yet, but sine six would obviously be um, six times 57 would be uh, 228, uh, 328, 338, 342 or something like that. So it will be negative as well. So, so somewhere here. And it turns out, okay, so so therefore these three are definitely negative, less than zero. Well, it turns out if you run a computational device like uh, um, like a calculator or on your computer, a Microsoft Excel, you would just realize that um, A5 is actually greater than zero, but A6 is the first number in that sequence of numbers which is actually less than zero. And then you wonder what will happen next right so um, and so we just established the first one and it turns out again if you run a, a computational device that the next number in the sequence will be less which will be less than zero will be a12 so the first one was a6 and then the, the following one will be a18 and the, and then the next one to our surprise is not a sub 24 but a sub 25 and so on. Um, so, um, so this is so this is the first one. That's the second, the third, and so on. So th that would be the fourth number in our sequence, which is less than zero. And the question is asking for the one hundredth one. Well, we have kind of like an idea of what's going on, probably, but um, and even intuitively, you can guess what the answer will be, right? So realizing that the period is. Uh, periodicity of this um, sequence is at least six and sometimes it's more than six sometimes it's seven so you you might guess the answer would be slightly more than 600 which is true but we'll find an exact way of doing that so let me open a new page and on that page let's see how we can um, work with this uh, number and how we can manipulate it using the um, product to sum formulas I would say Okay, so let me um, go ahead and rewrite the um, the expression. So we are given a sub n is um, equal to the summation of sine of k radian, k being equal to going from 1 to n. Now the key here, and this is a very common technique in um, in Amy problems, huh, when you are given such uh, trigonometric functions, um, is to somehow uh, make a telescoping argument out of this uh, summation. You might say there's nothing to telescope yet. Yes, that's true. But it will happen as soon as I multiply and divide this expression by sine 1. And so that expression will become something like this. And as I said, this is an extremely... Um, useful technique that you can solve Amy problems actually um, and so therefore the sum will become something like this um, sine um, k times sine 1 and obviously I can um, put that 1 into the summation sign because uh, well it, it is a constant and that you can bring any constant inside and out but you realize that I multiplied and divided um, this expression by the same number so I did not change its value but that's now good I can use the product to some formulas for the sine function sine times sine a times sine b it turns out sine a times sine b is simply equal to one half times cosine a minus b minus cosine a plus b and let me go ahead and write that down so therefore sine 1 summation let me just shortcut let me just say k here and then we would have as i said there will be a one half so let me actually go ahead and put that one half out that two out and so what's the remaining inside would be cosine k uh, minus one uh, minus cosine um, k plus one and that's perfect now uh, now we can go ahead 
and expand this uh, summation and, and and see what happens next so um, we have the coefficient at the front so let's just repeat that and then so when I plug in k equals 1 I get cosine 0 uh, minus uh, cosine 2 plus I plug in 2 I get cosine 1 minus cosine 3 I plug in 3 one more huh? so I will get cosine um, 2 minus cosine uh, 4 so I plug it in 3 and so on um, well if you observe uh, closely you will realize that this is a telescoping series and you can already guess what's going on but let's uh, write the last uh, so let's plug in all the way to n minus 1 and then finally n so when I plug in n minus 1 I will get cosine uh, n minus 1 minus 1 which is n minus 2 n minus 2 minus cosine so n minus 1 plus 1 which is cosine n um, and then finally uh, when I plug in n I would get cosine n minus 1 oops, minus cosine n plus 1 and then I can close the big um, brackets here and now um, if I cancel the like terms for instance starting with this term here I realize it's matching with this one so there's these two would cancel out that cosine 3 here will match with the next term first number here it would have started with cosine 3 so that should be gone as well and likewise the cosine 4 and all the others should cancel out um, and as I said the first number would cancel with two previous term uh, last number so that one will be definitely gone as well and in a similar way you can easily establish that this one would have been gone as well so therefore all the remaining terms are basically cosine 0 cosine 1 minus cosine n minus cosine n plus 1 and let's go ahead and rewrite this expression here so it would be 2 times sine 1 inside the bracket we have cosine 0 which is simply equal to 1 um, plus cosine 1 um, minus cosine n uh, minus cosine n plus 1 and um, now the best way to proceed from here is um, to use the sum to product formulas because I want to check if this expression this whole expression is greater is if it's less than zero or not right so under what conditions will this expression be less than zero and the way I will do it so let me first uh, put a bracket here and let's change this sign here um, I will apply the sum to product formulas here and here separately so therefore this expression will become so that will be actually equal to um, so from the sum to product formula there will be a 2 appearing and that it will cancel with that 2 here so I will have sine 1 um, so this expression the first expression here will become cosine of 1 half oops sorry for that times cosine of um, well 1 half again I guess huh? uh, minus um, cosine of uh, n plus one half times cosine of one half again, and and that's perfect. So now, um, obviously, uh, sine one, sine fifty-seven degrees is just a positive number. So this will have no effect whatsoever on the sine of the whole product. So all we care is. The, the expression inside the bracket here and we want to find the conditions for which this will be less than zero uh, when I do that so therefore all I check is I can divide both sides by cosine one half which is uh, I know this is greater than zero anyway so I can simply cancel out so therefore the, the desired condition is equivalent to showing that cosine one half radian uh, is actually um, less than cosine huh? because I want the whole thing to be negative right so that thing should be greater um, and oops, uh, plus uh, one half and and that's it so now let's uh, focus on the um, unit circle again 
uh, to have some insights about how to interpret this result because we're almost done actually so um, remember the um, horizontal is the uh, cosine uh, of any given number so cosine one half would be uh, about somewhere here and the cosine of it sorry so it would be um, somewhere here I should say um, and what we want is cosine n plus one half to be greater than cosine a half so basically what we want is cosine n plus one half to fall into um, somewhere in this region right anytime it falls into so this is kind of uh, a point so this would be cosine um, minus one half right so and um, so but it would hit the same point here so if you see that so all I need is to choose the ends such that um, our number uh, n plus one half will fall into um, this area here right in that case so the, the, so this distance here which is cosine um, one half and cosine n plus one half would be somewhere here as long as it's somewhere in this region I'm in good shape and it turns out that uh, as we have suspected earlier um, for n um, equals uh, 6 actually that's the first time where it will hit here inside and why is that because all I want huh, remember so this thing if this angle is, is one half here right and this one is also one half by the way in terms of measurement radian measurement so all I want therefore so this condition is actually equal to equivalent to saying that n should be uh, so it should be a number so I already have half here and I can add all the way to 2 pi minus a 1 right so anything in the range okay so let me write that down so let, let me be careful uh, I should say 2k uh, sorry 2k pi uh, minus 1 anything in this range and 2k pi would work but now what is fantastic is that 2k pi is an irrational number and minus 1 again irrational 2k pi is irrational so you have this range which measures 1 right so the measure of this the length and eh, length is equal to 1 and you, you you are squeezing between two irrational numbers so there, therefore there's only a single integer in that range so therefore what I'm saying here every time we add 2 pi to 1 half and we start at this point here every time I add 2 pi to it huh? so 1 half plus 2 pi I know that I will only get one uh, number in our sequence which will be less than zero and because it will fall in this so I'm saying that in this um, region there will be only a single uh, no, number right so okay and in a similar way all the way to for between 2 pi and 4 pi again there will be another one between 4 pi and 6 pi another one and so on so therefore all I should check is I will because I need the 100th uh, number for which it should be negative I need to go all the way to 200 pi right and I will get 200 numbers in that case 200 pi though um, I will hit this again right so when I have one half plus 200 pi I will be again at this point but all I need is I know that there will be a number in this range which will uh, uh, which will work and that number will be actually the integer which is less than that so the, uh, so that's it so um, um, well I mean uh, without the one half obviously sorry for that so the 200 pi huh so that that's how much I, I need to I will have to add to the one half here to the one half here and obviously pi is 3.14 200 times 3.14 would be 628 point something right but then the integer value would be 628 and that's all that would solve the problem so hope to see you in our next video